never going to get this stuff off. It's really ground in. Where's all the soap? Hey, guys, who used up all the soap? <laughs> never mind. I found it. You know, we take this stuff for granted, but it's pretty hard to get clean without it. So, what exactly is soap? And how does it get you clean? Well, all soap gets its cleaning power from two basic ingredients. <laughs> it's believed these ingredients were first stumbled upon accidentally thousands of years ago, right here. No, not here. Here. This is what soap is made of. Wood ashes and animal fat. The fat dripped from the meat cooking above and mixed with the ashes below. Later, when it rained, a sudsy mess developed in the fire pit. One enterprising person noticed that this mess was actually good at getting things clean. As time went on, the process of making soap from animal fat and ashes was refined. People poured their mixture into molds let it harden, and cut it up into bars ready for use. Wait a second. How can these two dirty, smelly ingredients possibly get you clean? I mean, this is the kind of gunk you want to clean off, isn't it? <coughs> oh, sorry. To answer this, it helps to understand why water alone doesn't get you clean. You see, when you get dirt on you, it mixes with the oil on your skin. And you've probably heard that oil and water don't mix. Here's what happens when you try and mix oil and water. The oil and water settle back into their own layers. The same thing happens when you try and wash using only water. See how the water just beads up? It won't mix with the oil, so it leaves it behind. Unfortunately, it leaves the dirt behind with it. What you need is something to get these two old enemies to cooperate. That's where fat and ashes come in. Fat is much like the oil on your skin. It's hydrophobic, meaning it hates water. Ashes, on the other hand, are hydrophilic. They love water. When the two mix together, a chemical reaction known as saponification takes place. Saponification occurs when a molecule from the fat and a molecule from the ash bond with each other. They form a single molecule that retains the properties of both. One end hates water, the other end loves it. Of course, our ancestors didn't know what was going on inside their pot. They just knew that when the mixture thickened and turned white, they had soap. So what happens when you let soap molecules loose in your wash water? This time, the oil and water did not separate. The soap got them to mix. The same thing happens on your skin. Imagine this is an oily glob stuck to your skin, and this is a soap molecule. The red end loves water. The white end hates water. In a desperate attempt to escape from the water, the water-hating end embeds itself into the glob, but the water-loving end sticks out. As you swish your wash water around, more and more soap molecules embed themselves into the dirty glob. Pretty soon, all that's exposed are the water-loving ends. Water can then easily latch onto these and whisk the whole mess down the drain. Unfortunately, oil isn't the only thing soap molecules stick to. They also stick to minerals like calcium and magnesium. These minerals can be found dissolved in most tap water. The soap and minerals bond together to form a nasty substance that's left behind after you wash. Yes, I'm talking about soap scum, bathtub ring. It sticks to everything, including hair. That's why you don't see people washing their hair with soap. For that, they reach for the shampoo. Shampoo doesn't contain soap, it contains detergent. What's the difference? Detergent works just like soap, but it doesn't bond with the minerals found in water, so it doesn't leave soap scum behind. So why don't we use detergent to clean all our body parts? Well, the answer's simple. 
detergents can be harsh on your skin. Soap isn't. It's much more gentle. So what about the soap we make today? Is it anything at all like the old stuff our ancestors made? Well, if you analyzed a bar of today's soap in a lab, you'll find all kinds of stuff. Dye to give it that nice designer color, perfume to make it smell nice, disinfectants to kill germs, sudsing agent to make it lather up, moisturizing cream to keep your skin soft. But none of these things have anything to do with getting you clean. When it comes to cleaning power, you'd find this stuff, sodium hydroxide. This is a chemical that's synthesized in the lab to replace wood ashes. And last, but certainly not least, you'd find plain old animal fat. You may find vegetable oil in some cases, but a lot of soap made today still contains animal